everyone, how's it going? So, I've finally finished my updated solar setup here. So I'm going to go ahead and go over the entire setup. And while I will be making some minor modifications down the road, such as adding a uh, camera so that I can monitor the voltage, little things like that, it's pretty much done. So the next step from here on out is obviously add more batteries, more solar panels, wind generator, whatever. But this is pretty much the way it's going to look like for quite a while. So let's go ahead and start at the beginning. My solar panels are coming in from here and again if you need more information on that I'll leave a link in the description uh, to a video that describes my solar panel setup. But uh, these are my main ends from the solar panels, my positive and my negative. This is 2 gauge drug burial wire, it's used to wire and it just comes in through the floor and then the panels are off on the shed in the back. So this is my main input right here. And this input, I'll go ahead and get this off of here. These two inputs right here, this positive and negative, is actually my uh, bike generator, which uh, uses a 10 gauge wire to run from the bicycle generator, which is in the living room, to the next room over, and that connects to this bus bar. This is a Blue Sea Systems bus bar. It's 150 amps DC. And it's really nice because it'll accept uh, up to a zero gauge connection, which for now that's that's all I need is uh, zero. I'm running two all over. So really nice uh, uh, little bus bar here. Uh, you know they they make them much larger than that, but this is a good fit for me. Um, and uh, so anyway, from there from the bus bar. I run up through this wire here, this is a 2 gauge wire, um, to this uh, 60 amp DC circuit breaker. Now if you've seen in my other videos you know that I'm familiar with these and I actually have a bunch of these out for the solar panels in the combiner box. But uh, this 60 amp DC uh, circuit breaker uh, doubles as obviously a fuse, whereas if the amperage exceeds 60 amps coming through this bus bar it will trip this breaker and that will protect the rest of the system it also doubles as a good um, a, a short a fault uh, it's not ground fault protection but uh, if something does short out then most likely this is going to trip so uh, I, I did have the uh, the battery um, switch and I decided to go ahead and go with this instead and uh, I also removed my 60 amp fuse that I had because I don't need it any longer. And then this is just a DIN rail uh, mount that I've got in the back here. This runs up to a very short 2 gauge wire that goes to my uh, shunt which is used for this meter right here. As you can see it's early morning it's about uh, 1030 I'm putting out about uh, looks like 12 amps DC when it's connected but this is a 75 amp shunt uh, 75 millivolts and this allows me to see the amperage that is running basically from the system from the panels okay this is not post production this is pre-production so this is raw input from the panels so the panels are generating 12 amps right now with the sun the way that it is okay and of course I've got the positive and the negative connections that run up to this box here that leads into the two connections on the back of the uh, the ammeter and this is just a standard analog ammeter it, it's rated up to 50 amps and it's a 75 millivolt um, ammeter so from the uh, shunt it runs down to this mercury switch which is part of the charge controller but the mercury switch here is a 60 amp expansion switch uh, it has a simple job to connect or disconnect the load. So when the charge controller commands that the uh, load go to divert rather than charge, it will actually send a 12 volt signal through here to this point here which will disconnect the mercury switch. And that's so you don't overcharge your batteries, which is exactly what it's doing right now. I have no load on the system right now except for I have my inverter just turned on but there's nothing hooked up to it right now I'm getting ready to do that but I wanted to demonstrate it going into divert 
But yeah, basically this just disconnects the load so that you don't overcharge your batteries. And of course the charge controller, which is made by Flex Charge, is an NC25A-12, so it's a 12 volt charge controller. Um, highly efficient, you know, 90 pl uh, 99 plus efficient. Um, it is a PWM charge controller, it is not MPPT. So just a quick rundown there, a PWM charger basically takes a slightly greater voltage from whatever input you have and allows that into the batteries and that charges the batteries whereas a MPPT controller can actually take your excess voltage and convert that into more charging amperage that's how MPPT works this is much cheaper this is hundred dollars for this thing and it's very efficient so basically all the electricity that's going into uh, the batteries that can go in the batteries does go in the batteries. However, it doesn't have any boost that uh, a MPPT controller uh, would provide. So, for example, right now my solar panels are probably putting out about 18 volts altogether. The charge controller is bringing that 18 volts down to right about here. So slightly greater than where it needs to be to charge the battery. So you could say that that extra 4 volts is actually wasted. So, this is the setup that I have. Down the road, I do plan on going MPPT, but for a good quality MPPT, you're going to be spending hundreds. I'm not talking about one of those cheap uh, MPPT claimed controllers uh, that you can basically get, you know, in China or whatever. I'm talking about a good quality uh, MPPT controller. So anyway, this is a super efficient charge controller, and it does its job wonderfully. Now, before I move on from there, up here I've got this box, which I need to uh, fix. But anyway, I was in such a hurry, but um, I'm going to be putting some tape around this anyway. Um, this is my voltmeter. It's just a standard blue light voltmeter. Um, it just tells me the, uh, the voltage of the battery bank. So you can see here that uh, the charge controller, I've got it set up to pull the charge away at approximately 14.2 volts. And then it picks the voltage back up at about 13 and a half volts. Now there is a delay on here as far as when it reads it, so it's not perfect, um, but it's pretty damn close. So that I actually have a switch, a DC switch here, where I can actually turn that off. Everything functions as normal. That just turns this off so that at night my wife doesn't have to see the big blue glow. But when I'm charging, I've got it on. So, uh, from the charge controller, it just runs a couple of sense wires, and the main output is this wire right here, two gauge wire that runs down to the batteries, and uh, that's you know that's pretty much it for the charging end of it. This is what it looks like. It's pretty simple, um, pretty basic, and it's uh, you know highly efficient. And of course, I've got my two batteries. Uh, these are. VMAX tanks batteries, uh, 125 amp hours each, and uh, they're solar batteries, and they power the inverter that I have up here. The solar panels obviously charge the batteries, and uh, this battery stand that I just got done building will hold eight batteries. Also allows me to have some compartment space down there, and the reason that I built the stand so high was to to shorten the length of the wires coming down from the charging. Remember, the shorter the wires, the less resistance, the more voltage, etc., etc. So I wanted these wires as short as possible. So these two batteries are actually really, really nice. They're identical, obviously. And I am planning on adding more. In fact, I have another battery on order. I just ordered it yesterday. It should be here probably Tuesday. And it's identical. So I'll have three batteries in total. And then over the winter, probably in January, I'm going to add another five batteries to the entire setup. So let's go ahead and look at these big, huge battery cables. Uh, I had these custom made. It looks kind of funky the way it is with these wrapped around like this, but I actually designed it for three batteries for now, and then I'm going to buy some extended length um, cables when I add the extra set of batteries. But uh, that's why I had this wrapped around like this, because these are actually too long uh, right now. But when I add the third battery, the ground terminal is going to be over in this area, so then this is going to wrap around here like that. But anyway, these are 2 aught battery cables. They're nickel plated, uh, solid copper, and they're really nice. They're flexible. They use a flexible wire. 
if you saw my previous video talking about this, this is the two gauge wire that I put together. This is THHN-2 and uh, it has no flex in it whatsoever. You can see it's just stiff. So I ended up having these custom made and they're custom insulated so they have a great amount of insulation so you can see they're actually larger um, diameter wise but they're the same gauge as far as the actual wire. So um, I've got you know obviously two on each side, two sets. So there's two positives on the uh, the end of the uh, inverter and two negatives. And of course I've got those connected directly into uh, the battery bank. Now why would you need two? Well, um, <clears throat> if you see, saw me open this thing up, you know there's a good amount of wire in here on the ends, but you can actually get more draw if you hook up both sets of battery terminals rather than just one. And I've heard about fuses blowing and safety things shutting down if you've only got one set of battery terminals hooked up. So I've just got them both. So basically whatever the inverter needs, if the battery is able to provide, it will. And that's that's the pipe. And then of course I've got my 5000 watt inverter. It's a power jack inverter. I've got a full unboxing and test of this inverter. I love this inverter. It's a really good inverter. And uh... I know they get bad reviews, people have had problems, but uh, I haven't had any problems at all, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, if you have any questions, let me know. This is my entire setup updated. Uh, it's much cleaner, it's much better all around, and I'm looking forward to continuously expanding on it. So, if you have any questions, again, let me know. Take care, guys.